The world's best surfers are in Brazil for stop number three of the 2012 ASP World Tour, the Billabong Rio Pro. The men's event has a field of 36 surfers, while in the women's event there are 18. You know, when you come here, it's totally different from all the other stops on tour. Everybody loves surfing here in Rio, and it's an awesome place to come for an event. Get to see all the fans come down here and go pretty wild over this, so it's, it's definitely different for us. More people have access to see the best surf in the world. The people are really enthusiastic, and I think that's great for our sport. Taking off on waves and the whole beach is screaming and freaking out if you get a good wave, and it really gets you psyched up to get like some more waves. It's a good sort of atmosphere to compete in, and the beach really erupts when one of their fellow Brazilian surfers are in the water though. Defending Rio champion Adriano de Souza is looking to live up to the high expectations of his fanatical local support. I want to try to be a two times champ of this event. World number one Kelly Slater is missing the event with an injury ruling out the 11 time world champion. Without Kelly in the contest, would be uh, more pressure. Whoever kind of does the best and, and gets a win or uh, the highest result will definitely take on a number one spot. With the city of Rio right by the Atlantic Ocean and hosting a wide variety of wave locations, contest organizers have made the decision to get the early rounds going at the beach at Arpador. Joe Parkinson making a move. Rips out first turn off the top. Solid surfing on the back end of Parkour there. Joe Parkinson comes into this event ranked number five in the world. He made it through to round three with an efficient display on his backhand. The older I'm getting, the more I just appreciate going left, you know, because I spent half my year going right, so it's good to just get some laughs. Julian Wilson was looking for some degree of redemption after a disappointing performance at the last event in California. He posted the highest heat total of the day with a 17.14. I knew we had a good heat on our hands and the tide was getting better, so we really just wanted to get out of the gates strong and get a good solid start. Julian Wilson up here, throwing down that huge air. We've got Ace up and riding. So let's see if he's going to fight his way through. Nice, a lay back hack. And I like the emotion he's pouring out to the crowd. Definitely fired up and donated a little bit of blood to the rock. you got to do what you got to do for the win. Round one of the women's event got started with equal aggression. Rebecca Woods of Australia won her heat, revealing some of her strategy. I've, I've been worked a lot by the young girls over the last two years, um, hassling-wise, and I'm not giving anything away anymore. Event wildcard Lisa Quizon went up against four-time world champion Steph Gilmore. I was so nervous coming into that meet and I'm just happy that I made it through. With the women's title race closer than ever, there was an element of pressure on current world number one Steph Gilmore as she went into her round two heat. But Gilmore remained focused and showed her experience in the marginal conditions. Super calculated Stephanie Gilmore. When it's inconsistent and really hard to surf, it's like it's, there's so many things going through your mind. You had to really stay calm and composed and pick the right waves in the set and follow your gut, I think, not kind of second guessing yourself. You block everything else out and it's just that moment, you and that wave. And I just think about the wave itself and just how much I want to destroy it. I think if you let anything else come in, you know, you'll mess up. So it's just about focusing on that moment. I think I live for that competitive moment and like training hard and, and surfing towards something and you know, having the, the ultimate goal of being world champ is something that drives you forward. And this year on tour, it's been one of the toughest we've seen. Each event's been up for grabs and there's a number of girls that have the chance to win it. You can't discount Steph, who's been on fire all year. She's in the lead of the ratings. And then you have Sally, who wants it really bad. Round three of the women's event took place further along the coast at Barra. With the dropping swell, the women looked to make the most of the smaller waves. Yeah, not much to say about the conditions. I mean, <laughs> it's surfable. 17-year-old <laughs> Elisa Kizon had performed beyond all expectation and went into a quarterfinal against Courtney Conlog with nothing to lose. The giant killer continues her amazing run. Gosh, I was stressing out so bad. Coco Ho took out a big win against Steph Gilmore in their quarterfinal matchup. Ho would have to stop Elisa Cuisan in her tracks if she were to make it to the final. Could Cuisan, the 17-year-old wildcard, make it all the way? 
She's been taking out big names the whole event, so it's going to be a good heat. Here we go, Alyssa Puzon. Nice looking section there. That's probably the turn of the morning. That's a good way. Ho would edge it, but only just, and sneaked out the win in a dramatic end of the heat. That last 10 seconds just got so lucky. It was pretty crazy. In the other women's semifinal, Sally Fitzgibbons would face Carissa Moore to see who would face Coco Ho in the final. One word for Sally Fitzgibbons. Consistent. One word for Carissa. <sighs> Monster. It was a hard fought battle that went right down to the wire with both surfers posting high scores. In the end, Fitzgibbons won it, but only by a margin of 0.1 of a point. The pressure cooker moments, you know, those waves in the last sort of minute or so, they're always in slow motion. Just putting like the crowd and the people, the announcers out of your mind and, and just really focusing in on that moment. In the final, the lead would change multiple times before the champion was decided. Fitzgibbons made the best start, scoring a 6.17. Sally Fitzgibbons, and she just flows one minute into the next. It was up to Coco Ho to rise to the challenge. She did more than that and took the lead with a wave score of 8.43. Sally Fitzgibbons was left needing a high seven point ride with just minutes remaining in the heat. With the seconds ticking down, she got to her feet and went to work on a left hander. The wave is coming and a solid one. Sally Fitzgibbons making a move here. Third maneuver strong and she finishes it off and that will be the score to get her into the lead I'd say. When the scores dropped, she'd done just enough scoring a 7.93. Sally Fitzgibbons became the Billabong Rio Pro Champion. I felt like there was one coming, and um, yeah, to get it, oh, I'm so excited. Come on, let's hear it right. Let's hear it for Sally Fitzgibbons. Oh! All right, your Billabong Rio Pro winner. The men's event progressed to round two, and here the stakes are high. If a surfer loses, then he's packing his bags. The tough conditions would be an added challenge. Challenging. <laughs> those waves, it's solid, there's barrels, so it's show is on. It was a mixed bag for Beat Durbage as he juggled getting barreled with a run around the beach and a broken board. You've got to be really quick and agile, you know, like you're ducking and leaving. These conditions are just suited perfectly to him, you know. You pretty much muscle any section. And Michelle Perez pulls off on a bomb here. Michelle Perez is an instinctive barrel rider and it showed in his round two victory. I was waiting for that one to come for so long and actually came and I was really lucky, you know, to be at the right place and the right time. When you're taking off, you're just like, wow, I hope I make the drop here. Great tube riding style there from CJ, he manages to find his way out of the barrel. Like all rookies on the ASP World Tour, John John Florence is under the spotlight to perform at the elite level. He rose to the challenge and made it through. This is the best conditions John could ask for is right running barrels. This is just like home. John John's ability in the barrel is phenomenal. Considering he's like 19, that's just incredible. I think guys like John John are going to kind of come into their own in waves like this. Those kids are pretty phenomenal talents and in, in beach break waves like this, they're all capable of launching massive airs and, and landing a big score with one turn. At least one or two of these new school guys will be in a final. You know, the older guys, the guys maybe around my age, a lot of the other guys grew up surfing in a different style, different era totally, and, and so airs just aren't a part of the game. Us older guys, yeah, we want to beat them, and oh, I especially get fired up when I surf against those guys. To be 18 and on tour, I can't even dream of that. You know, I, was, I got on tour when I was 22, so, you know, I was throwing peanut butter jellies against walls when I was 18, I don't know, just chasing girls or something. It's good because the young guys come along and really make you lift your game. You know, they, they force you to reevaluate how you can get a better score and, and push the limits of your surfing. In one of the most thrilling heats of the day, Matt Wilkinson took on Adam Melling. Wilkinson took off on a big set wave, turning the screw on his fellow Australian. Another way for Wilco, nice oh. big backhand hit. But Melling couldn't stay out of the two. On his next one, he scored a 9.67, crushing Wilkinson's hopes of progressing. Look at him go, that's unbelievable. It's a good one, it's sucking off the bank pretty good. Some of them are a little bit evil with a few steps, but that one was pretty perfect. I didn't know what I needed. I got that right and I was like, yeah, it's doing the runaround. And our legs were burning. And then they're like, needed nine. And I was like, <laughs> I just wanted to fall over and cry.
Round three continued in pumping surf conditions. There were barrels on offer if you could find an exit. Julian Wilson taking off. Oh, nice left, and he's going to come out the doggy door. Going down to the city. I got soul and a knack of People ain't got a money's dead. In a much anticipated matchup, Jordy Smith took on rookie sensation Kolohe Andino. Jordy Smith packing the two. He comes out easily off the bottom, little arc off the top, maybe one more section here on the inside. Throws the fins towards the beach, stomps the air reverse without a problem. But Smith's experience showed, and he won the heat. I knew it was going to be a tough heat. He's a great aerialist, and um, unfortunately, he just didn't get any good waves out there. Really tough conditions out there. It's kind of basically just closing out, and you got to find the right one. I think it's the guys that are taking advantage of what they get and, and surfing what they get well that are making heats. Julian Wilson was looking to build on his momentum, but faced John John Florence. Wilson took command with a 9.83, one of the best scoring waves of the entire event. He led the heat right to the end. Only five seconds for John John. He is moving here. Wow, Three, two. On. With a mere few seconds to go, Florence found a wave, worked some magic, and left the water not knowing his score. He needed a 7.88 to get through. When you need a score in the dying seconds, it's kind of the best and worst feeling in the world because you can see like you've got your one last shot coming at you. Yes, it's my chance now. Come on, let's do it. It's a great feeling. You know, it's kind of almost a relief because a, a lot of times you, you, when you need a score, you just don't get the opportunity. I tend to just take it no matter what. I don't even think twice. It's funny, yeah, you can hear people whistling on the beach, crowds going wild. It's an adventure for sure, but you know, those are the moments I think some of your best surfing comes through. The local crowd had something to cheer about in non-elimination round four, when Adriano D'Souza scored the only perfect 10 of the contest. And there it is, uh, it's a 10 point ride across the board. But it was Josh Kerr who won the heat with a better combined score, taking him straight through to the quarterfinals, but leaving local fans angry at the result. You know, they're passionate people, the Brazilians. You know, you got a heat against Adriano, their number one kid. It's the person they want to win the event, so they want, obviously, us to lose. <laughs> you, you have to channel it into positive energy and just take it on and, and feed off it. You feel like you're in some crazy soccer game or something. Gives you that little bit of spark to be like, I really want to beat them now because <laughs> you can piss all these people off. In a rematch of last year's final, Taj Burrow took on Adriano D'Souza in round five. Both surfers would be fighting to remain in the event. Taj beat him on the Gold Coast this year at the start, so yeah, it's one all. Here goes Taj in the barrel, it's not quite finding it though. The Brazilian left it to the end to nail the win, but did so in style, taking it home for the locals and going on to the quarterfinals. This is my home break, you know, everyone like supporting me over here, so I'm really glad to make this heat. Jordy Smith and Joel Parkinson met in round five, their third meeting already on this year's tour. I don't know why you get those matchups where we just seem to keep running into each other. He's got me a few times. I got him last time at Bells, but I really like the battle me and Jordy got going. But this time it was not to be for Smith. Parkinson made short work of his opponent with an explosive display of tube riding. But Joel Parkinson gets out of one of the best tubes we've seen today. He secured the highest heat score of the event with an 18.33. Who would have thought I would have been coming to Brazil and getting two nines getting barreled? Poor Jordy got really nothing. Finals day saw the surf smaller but cleaner. With the event title on the line as well as crucial ranking points, it was all to play for. Mick Fanning put together a workmanlike performance and advanced to the semifinals. There's always going to be a hard heat against Alejo. Um, he's pretty much got all the tricks. And, you know, when, when you're up against the best surfers in the world, you've got to go out and give it your all. You can't really hold anything back. And, um, but yeah, today, final day, nothing to lose, so everything to gain. It is pressure, and everyone wanted to see you win the contest, but the top two that you have such a great talent. Yugo, 
fighting with the surfer, with the time, with the scores. Here we go, Adrian D'Souza goes for an aerial and lands it. With D'Souza taking an early lead in the quarterfinal, Josh Kerr needed to pull off something big. Here we go, Josh Kerr lands it. Oh my it. god. The judges awarded him with a 9.43 and he took the win. Kersey's heat just then was amazing. Kersey got his two scoring rights on two kind of full rotation airs and, and that's kind of his pattern of move. He has those things on lockdown and, and the way he does them, they have to give him good scores. But yeah, that was sick. In a beach break, I think the judges, in their eyes, they're kind of looking for that one big maneuver that stands out. It's going to be the one that probably gets rewarded the highest. There's nines and tens being dropped for single maneuvers, and it's kind of a short, punchy wave, so there's going to be a lot of really big airs and a lot of kind of big turns just to get through heats. Good, powerful uh, conventional surfing is, is getting rewarded as well. It's a really tough job for the judges at the moment. The quarterfinals saw Tiago Perez take on Joel Parkinson. Joel Parkinson, late take off behind, great stall for the tube. Parkinson found a barrel and took the win. And Joel Parkinson moves on through to semi-final number one. Julian Wilson and John John Florence met once again in the quarterfinals. Florence's barrel riding skills looked unrivaled at this event and there was no stopping him. And that's going to be a huge score as well, he's way out in front. <laughs> Went out there to play a little more of the patience game today and it worked out, it ended up working out really good actually and I'm, I'm stoked. Lifelong friends Mick Fanning and Joel Parkinson would once more find themselves pitted against each other. Although Fanning found an early barrel, it was Parkinson who would take the glory and go on to the final. Goes for a big alley -oop and does make it. Oh my goodness. I don't know, I closed my eyes actually. I was just spinning out of control and just landed and I was like, oh sweet, I'm still standing. The other semi-final was Josh Kerr against John John Florence. Kerr has a near freakish ability to pull off huge scoring single maneuvers. That is a very technical grab on your backhand. Just lands it perfectly with the wave and we've got a heat on our hands. It's scary. You've got these guys in your heats and you're just thinking, you're just like, oh, what do I got to do to beat this guy? It's just tough. There's a lot of good surfers. You make one mistake on the CT, you can lose a heat. All these kids have, you know, their big contracts, they got a lot of pressure, pressure from themselves as from their sponsors as well. And those guys, you know, they're just going to take a little bit of time until they work it out and then they'll, they'll dominate for sure. I just figured out I was just going to surf how I surf. I'm not going to try to change my surfing to anyone else's out there and hopefully it comes through working out. John John Florence is going off out in this lineup. Florence took the win with a 17.94. I'm stoked to make the semis and made the final and I was like, I'm just happy to be in the final. The final was a story of the experienced pro versus the rookie. Two-time Triple Crown champion and last year's World Tour runner-up Joel Parkinson would take on 19-year-old John John Florence, competing in only his third ever World Tour event. Florence simply made a sensational start. His first wave scored a 9.10. Gonna go straight to the air. Big backside air reverse. What an unbelievable start. 9.10. Within minutes of the start, Parkinson found himself with his back to the wall and was finding it difficult connecting with the right waves. Florence applied even more pressure on his next wave. By now, he'd amassed a score of 16.37. Blowing the bends into reverse towards the beach. His kid can do it all. Parkinson finally got a good one, giving himself a chance to take the win. Joel Parkinson taking off. He's looking for a barrel. He needs a big finish, and he gets one. But for 10 minutes, the ocean stayed flat, and the clock wound down with Florence in the lead. With no more waves, it looked like Parkinson would have to settle for second place. However, this would give him enough points to take him to the number one spot on the world ranking. But the glory of the day went to the rookie from Hawaii. He's been wanting this since he was five years old and his dreams are coming true right now. This is the biggest achievement of my life for sure. I still can't really believe it. Yeah, I'm just so happy. I was hoping to make as many heats as I could, you know, I wasn't quite thinking about like actually winning the event. Let 
Let's hear it for your champion right here, John John Flores. Let's hear it. Come on. How does it feel to win your first WCT championship? I can't even believe it. I'm just like, I'm shocked. He really is a prodigy who's lived up to all the hype throughout his career. It's no surprise that he has finally snagged a World Tour victory. I just went out there and surfed, you know, I got a good early start. I got a nine and then back to about a seven right away. You have these two big scores, but then you're sitting there for 27 minutes just looking at your clock, just like, oh God, I have to sit here this whole time just thinking about it. So I was just sticking to him and I was not gonna let him get a wave. Finally, yeah, he came out to me. He was just saying, good job. It was such a big relief. I think that was the longest 30 minutes of my life. I'm still learning a lot from all the older guys and um, winning events like this. And it's just a big confidence booster for me. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.